This must be what it like. I can't. Let me try that again. This must be what it's like to have wind blowing up your skirt. What do I mean? If you were here, if you were here, you could hear the wind blowing, whipping through the trees and going underneath my teepee cover, which doesn't have a liner now. I took the liner down to let it dry because I thought winter is over. And I'm look, I'm, I, I, I see snow, like foghorn leghorn, I'm not awake. Damn it, John, drink your coffee. You're not making sense. Oh, well, that goes good with the stuff formerly known as Red Man that is now America's best because uh, of reasons. But lest I deviate too far from the intended purpose of this video extravaganza, <clears throat> doing a little tellering and balancing, and this is uh, in, resp in response, I'm responding to a, a, a Gmail I had from a fellow in uh, Romanian. I have to say that your, your English is better than mine. I give credit where credit is due, and this fellow, I don't assume that your first language is English, and uh, you've got a master of it. American style English. There's differences. There's Southern American English. There's England English. There's Scottish English, English which I can't understand. But lest I get into trouble here. Okay, so <clears throat> there's a, a unique thing that I find about these bows, the three bend bows, and even the five bend bows if I had the tips here. There's some interesting changes that happen in the, the working of the wood when you have a bow that's shaped like this. It just, I don't get it. There, I haven't wrapped my mind around it completely. For one thing, it seems like it's easier to get balanced limbs. Um, the tillering is easier. Now, <clears throat> so don't panic. In the case of mine, I do, just like these tips are narrow and then they go out, the handle section changes in width. And it wouldn't be an issue with Osage or, or you or stuff, stuff like that. Maybe Mulberry. But when you're dealing with just about every other single piece of wood in the universe, where you have a wider limb that goes into a narrower or deeper handle, this constriction here, if you have a bending in your handle, you risk compression failure in that handle. Uh, maybe not so much with red oak, you know, and white oak. Oaks are are used so much, red oak especially. But they, on the scale of bow woods, I don't think they get the credit they deserve. I don't necessarily need to worry about, and I'm not gonna torture this bow too much because the sinew's only been curing for about a month. But in the order of things, I would feel more comfortable having this change in thickness and width in the handle with red oak than I would in white ash. White ash, if I had the bent through the handle here and it was a change of width and, and then thickness like it is and it bent through the handle. In white ash, I would bet the farm that I'm going to have compression failure in here. It's going to start forming the chrysals, chrysals, and <clears throat> bad stuff would happen. Red oak, not so much. Uh, the white oak and red oak <coughs> are such great woods, they really are. But anyway, a couple things here. You have to really rely on your eye. I, I, I've got a tillering stick. It's in the pole barn, but I'm the short tillering right now. I mean, I could hold it up to a mirror and bend it back. Aren't the bends in these things beautiful? But I'm short tillering. And so I do a couple things. I've got these bends here, and I can set them against, say, picture this is a flooring, six inches, you know, whatever, panels. I could set these things against the edge of a floorboard and then see where these tips line up. That's one way to do it. I could, which I do, see I've got a, a measuring thing. I can go along here and it's like, okay, at this brace height, which is just tiller and brace height, four inches, four inches. And so it's even this way. These things are funny. The short bows, it looks like this has more bend. It looks like this has more bend. And what I'm trying to communicate is 
being short and with these bends, you can't really rely on, on this so much unless you do this and it's like, oh, you know, it's all even. But anyway, a few tips. At this point, I would estimate, again, I'm not going to yank this all the way back because I don't, I don't view the, the sinew to be quite done. Now, from what I've done, I have pulled it back farther than this and I've tillered it and I've exercised it whenever I remove wood. But I can tell I haven't damaged the sinew layer whatsoever because when I take the string off and I stick it against the wall, it still rocks like this. It hasn't gained what you would call in your language string follow or set. It hasn't. I've been tillering on this thing all morning. I've been yanking it back, not 20 inches back, um, and really horsing it around again. I have to take it gently, tiller it to a point where it's like, yes, I can estimate the final draw weight of this and send it off to Ben and say, hey Ben, just let it sit for a while and finish up and, and hopefully it'll be still balanced. I don't see why it wouldn't. But I haven't in my my journey of tillering this thing and working it down have not injured it any because again I can set it against the wall when it's not strong and it still rocks. These tips on a straight line do not go this way of the handle. They're still that way of the handle so all is good. Okay and so one of the most useful views I have with this when I'm tillering it is is this. I can sight down this limb. I've got my beady little eye on it. And I'm bending it. And I can see. Now I'm using my left eye. I'm ambidextrous. I'm seeing that there is a beautiful even bend along here. Now I'm going to rely on my eye again. And I'm going to sight it like this. And. I can see a taper. It's got a nice taper. and <clears throat> You have to trust your vision. You know, really. Now I remember a long time ago I was sitting in the pole, well, standing in the pole barn, tillering a bow. I just had it from a stick. I don't know what kind of stave it was, maybe white ash or something. Now I remember getting to the final point and I'm sanding it. Longer bow than this. I put the tip on my foot and I'm sanding it like this. And it was like, oh my gosh. Now I didn't use uh, my scribomatic, you know, to get the basic thickness profile down. I didn't use anything except probably my, I don't have one here, my W84 Western Cutlery knife and maybe a rasp and block of sandpaper. And it struck me like a lightning bolt to my head. It got to be theatrical to keep your attention. I'm looking down it, and it's like, oh my gosh, this bow has formed a beautiful taper. I could see that taper where it was thick here, and it tapered so nice and evenly. And it had, I remember a jog or two. <clears throat> it wasn't from board. It wasn't from a perfectly straight stave. It's like, wow, you know, just the act of careful tillering has created this this wonderful living taper in this bow. And what I'm trying to do is communicate the excitement of using your eye to see the bend as they, as they have done to them, have done for thousands of years, where there is no stiff, and I see it a lot of <coughs> Um, neophytes and people that haven't really gotten the, the full bow into their blood veins will have a very stiff long bow and then a lot of bend out here. It's like, oh my gosh, you've wasted all this limage right in here. But I'm looking at this thing. And oh, I'm still excited about bows. In fact, I'm going to put a picture for my thumbnail of what I took last night. I'm sending people this picture it's like this is what I did this month it's wonderful the excitement of it I'm actually working here okay now suppose I'm gonna find one of these limbs 
it, they need to be worked down a little bit. It's probably 60 pounds at 20 inches right now. That's what I would estimate. And I do, in red oak, and even ash, I like these on the heavier side with a reduced draw than lighter weight at a, a longer draw. <coughs> I like to have a substantial bow. Okay, this is a hair. This is, that string is right on the four inch line, right on the line for four inches. And this is, gosh, a hair less. And so, on this string with that dangling, it needs to be, it needs to be lighter. So, at this point, I think I'm going to go with scraping break out my razor blade and because it's got such a beautiful taper already and a nice sang I'm just gonna say the whole limb needs to be reduced honestly gang I like using scraping at this point so I don't have to finish sand it <laughs> it's just one less thing to do and then I remove some wood slowly and carefully okay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can see the full bed. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <clears throat> see, <if, coughs> see if I made it move in here. Well, by, by dingy. That's dead even. By doing that, I stretched the string a little bit. And uh, just that much changed it. So now, I'm going to, watch this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. This is why I'm yakking up along. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Sight down here. Beautiful. Sight down this one. Beautiful. I actually feel like I knocked like a half a pound off of it. Check it again. Huh. Perfectly even. I wonder how straight this bench is while you can't. Anyway, that's about it. I would rather have, you know, a short draw at a higher weight with one of these things than a, a long draw with a low weight kind of goes into that whole thing you pass this point where suddenly you're not stressing the wood inside it enough I have to keep an eye on this now it's sinew backed which is good and I've got the birch bark back on it that doesn't go all the way across um, the span of the limb and when I was doing the belly I wound up I had this temporary wrap of sinew right here. And I have to be careful that the, the birch bark doesn't like delaminate, but so far it's solid. Um, because this is bending here and I've got a backing over another backing, I have to be careful that it doesn't pull up. So far it's not pulling up, which is good. It's a race. I want to get this thing all tillered, balanced, all ready to go before the possible peeling up of this edge of the the um, birch bark at all. It is lifting up slightly, just at the last eighth of an inch, but that's okay. I've been horsing it around. But pretty soon, this will be all ready to send off to Ben. I, I did. I, I emailed you, Ben. And um, I'm going to wait until I go too crazy to see what your draw weight preference on a long draw bow is. Because if 
you're at 55 pounds on a 28 or 29 inch draw or whatever, let's just call it a full draw, a Robin Hood draw, then if you're making one of these things, I would suggest that you have it a little higher because it's much easier to pull a heavier weight a shorter distance than it is this way. Plus you want these things to like make arrows sing. That's all. I'm done torturing you. Hope you got something out of it. I'm going to put away my my toys here and just warm up a little bit. Man, it's spring. Where's the spring weather? And I see that Earl actually did eat some of the seeds, so that's good. A little thank you note for Warpath. Have a good one. Make bows. Make bows. You can do it. Don't just watch bow making videos. Even if you run off the home desk spot and you get uh, a, a two by whatever in red oak. And what's nice about home desk spot, at least here, is they'll cut it to length. You've got the perfect grain on a 16 foot long board and you don't want 16 feet. You just run off to that gentleman at the back of the store and say, I would like 72 inches right here. And here they'll cut it for you. So you're not out that much money. Um, go and uh, tie a string to each end and sand or scrape or cut. Make a bow. You can do it. You can do it. Because I didn't hit the button.